Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Bahrain Now with me, Bara Abdullah. We've got a great show lined up full of local talents, initiatives, and events from around the kingdom. All this and more right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, to all the gamers, pop culture fanatics, and wrestling fans out there, put your controllers down, put everything down for this segment as we welcome to the studio the founder of the For Geeks Eyes Only YouTube channel, Iyad. Pretty much the guy who's behind a very cool YouTube channel that you got to know more about it right here at the studio. So good evening, Iyad. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me here today. Oh man, it is a long one coming for a long time. We needed to have you here, definitely. Okay. As to me, I think you're one of the pillars of what made Bahrain pretty much have a transition to the pop culture scene. You are one of the, those pillars, you know? Like a hidden gem, I would say. But tell us more about your YouTube channel. Uh, that's high praise to stand for. And uh, you humbled me, to be honest. I'm really good, as you mentioned. I have a YouTube channel for Geek Size Only. And uh, I started around 2014, but I probably wrote down my ideas for the channel around mm. 2010. I wrote down a lot of ideas about not just the content, but the vibe I wanted for the right. channel and the style basically for the channel. And a lot of those ideas uh, I didn't even uh, do because they got, I scrapped them out of the plan. New ideas came in and as soon as I started, I found out y you learn more and you want to add more ideas. So right. it, till today, I'm adding new ideas, new things, new ideas and new styles. And I change, you know, you have to change a lot. Oh, totally, man. But I saw you, I mean, me being one of the fans of your channel and seeing you in all the, I would say, gaming, pop culture, wrestling events taking place in Bahrain, <clears throat> you became like a reference to a lot of people, but not only locally, even at some point, I would say regionally and even globally. Some of the stuff you do, it's like you don't go just following the trends. You are your own trend at this point, I guess, right? You do retro gaming. You pretty much go to the oldies, but you dig deep into the, I would say, the technicality, the story behind why things are happening. Why is that thing happening with your channel? Why do you like to do that? Uh, when I first started, I checked out a lot of channels. Right. Just to know what are they doing and what are they not doing. And I kind of focused on that. Over here in the region, there weren't many people talking about the how can i put the strange games weird right. games the history nobody was talking about hi history right. back then so that's kind of where i focused and i tend to focus a lot on weird things that are not common mm. and sometimes like that's the best the best compliment i can get like a, a comment the best comment i can get is wow i never heard of this but right. i love it so much now oh or, yeah this is so weird but i love it yeah i mean one of your, I would say, reports is uh, a wrestler, Abdul. Abdul the Butcher, yes. Dude, dude, that was something else. Like, you literally went out there, you collected everything that can be collected, and you put it all in one show. So what was your drive to do that? Okay, uh, I mentioned that in the video, but that video alone, I started writing it or collecting data for it since 2018. 18? Yeah, and I released it this, this year, and it was my first English video. So okay. this is my second channel now. Amazing. And I took everything I learned from my first channel, which is like eight years of experience, mm. and I put it in that video alone. So I poured a lot of love and a lot of uh, things went into that video. So when you look at that video, that video technically summarizes everything I did for the past eight years. Amazing. All the things I learned, Crazy. all the techniques, all the video editing techniques, or even presenting techniques. Wow, wow. So now from wrestling a little bit to retro gaming, yes. do you have like a special love to retro? Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I love. And that's why the Abdullah topic was so interesting because a lot of the games I mentioned in that video are old games. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, how do you find all these, I would say, retro stuff? Like every time I come in, you find like there's something from Japan, from the States, a cartridge or a game. I mean, what's the process? Uh, it takes a long time and I've been collecting for a long time. That's why I decided to go and do retro game videos because it was the easiest thing for me. Like I already had a small collection back then and when I started, but now it grew. And again, I just look for these weird like stuff 
all around the world. And like you mentioned, Japan. You can go in Japan and find a sea of weird things, especially in gaming, right. that no one has heard of. That, For me, that's a very interesting thing when you're talking about something that nobody knows of. It's not common, but here's the trick. How do you present it in a presentable way that someone who's never heard of that thing would be interested in just basically just watching the video, okay. not, not necessarily going and playing the video or right. buying the game. Let me ask you this. Now, as you've been doing this YouTube channel for such a long time, what does it mean to you at this point? Uh, it means everything to me. Like, I learned a lot. I didn't expect to learn a lot. That's the thing. Mm. Uh, because even before I started, you know, uh, I, I was a hobby of taking uh, photography, uh, videography. So, but that didn't help me. Like, the techniques are different. So, it was definitely a learning experience and still is. Mm. But every day you learn something new and technology keeps changing, so you right. have to keep up. Right. I can only right now see you being your own NFT. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're going to be like this unique thing happening and I'm going to be the first to buy it and, you know, I'm going to resell it again in a higher price. <laughs> like whether it's a logo or, or something like that, it's like I'm taking that, <laughs> definitely. What is your favorite game, man? <laughs> My favorite game, uh, a lot of people, when they ask me that, they expect me to say like this big triple A game that's Call a big Duty, budget Assassin's game. Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, Resident Evil, and no? You know, no, I love to stick with the basics. Okay. Mario and Sonic, I can <laughs> play them every I'm day, a Sonic all fan day. all the way, yeah. 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 I stick with the basics. They're really, really good games, and mm. they're the games that inspire a lot of other games. You know? Oh, man. Look, Mario's doing great. Sonic. And the, on the other hand, I think we're gonna see a relaunch for the games as well. Yeah. And now the new movie coming up, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I'm looking forward to that big time. It's gonna be a crazy thing. So what's your, what's your expectations? For the movie, um, it's, I don't think uh, it was made for me in mind, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but like I said, that's why I stick with the old games. Right. If the new game is not good, if the movie's not good, I can always go back to the old games and play. Amazing. Sonic 3 is your favorite, I would say, out of the Sonic games? Sonic 2. Sonic 2? Yes. Really? Okay. And Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventures 2. Oh man, I, I used to ace that game all the time. You know, like, you know all, even the, the first stage, I would get an S rank. You know, sliding down pretty much from the helicopter all the way down to the city. And the music, it, the direction and the direction and the producer of the game just made a remarkable thing going on with there. Kind of getting on the vibes. See, that's why I like your vibes. <laughs> it takes me there all the time. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges with a channel like yours and other people trying to pretty much be a niche. So as you've reached to a good achievement right now, and people know you for being pretty much a reference, I would say an educator in the pop culture, wrestling, and gaming scene. And only that historian maybe at some point, okay. very intelligent, very intellectual, very articulated with the way you present stuff. So what's the future for you right now? Well, the future, I think, uh, the after the Abdullah the Butcher video and the new channel, which is in English, this is my first you know, steps in doing English content, I think that told me exactly where my trajectory should go. Okay. And listening to you right now also tells me exactly where, no, where man, I should I, do. No, man, the thing is you're so good in your bilingual. So whether it's Arabic or English, you have a great command in both worlds at this point. So do you think pretty much right now you go want to go international or you want to focus more on the regional scene? No, definitely I'll stick with the regional, but mm. any video that I will uh, produce in the English channel, I'll try to, you know, mirror the experience over here. Like there are a lot of English channels out there doing the same topics I'm going to be doing probably. I want it to be from the experience of someone from Bahrain, from the region, because okay. we all play this, the same games, we all play, the, we all watch the same movies, but everybody's experience is different, I mm. figure. So I want to project that to the world, I guess. Okay, after let's say more than eight years of experience being a YouTuber, an educator, you know, a pillar of the Bahrain pop culture scene, what advice would you give young YouTubers or content creators? Thank you for the praise. I'm loving the word pillar now. <laughs> it's my favorite word. And so advice is uh, don't copy. A lot of people copy and I was probably going to do that at the start. Uh, it was easy to copy someone and do the same topics. But you can always take the same exact topic, the same exact game, and look at it from a completely different perspective. And people want to see that because 
the, it's on YouTube especially, it's always repetitive. It's a lot of the same content, different people mm. and different presenters, but it's all the same presentation. They're all showing you the same thing. Mm. So look at it from a different angle. Okay. So just don't copy, be yourself, have fun, learn, and just keep going. Yep. If I would want to ask you about what is that one thing that kept you consistent all these years? Because, you know, we've seen a lot of channels being themselves, having their own topics, but the moment they see that they put a lot of effort, hours and hours and hours of their lives, like cutting off themselves from social life and all that, because editing a video can take a lot of time, right? And putting all the information in, and yeah, it's just a lot of work. What would make you go consistent in producing YouTube channel? Because we've seen a lot of channels just die in the first three or four months, maybe even a year, and then say they give up, that's it. But you kept going, so what was that for you? To be honest, it was a lot of times I would do a topic that's for me. Like, from the start, I know, and I tell myself, nobody's gonna watch this. This, this is just for me. Okay. It's something in my head, let it out in the world. If, if uh, somebody watches it and likes it, they like it. If not, okay. I like it. So, <laughs> and because it's easy to follow the trend, especially with on YouTube. Oh yeah, man. So that's what I do. Like, and I'm always surprised because a lot of the videos I make for myself, like not all of them, but one of them will like pop and it will get big and a lot of people will like it. And I'm like surprised. Like the Pepsi Man video. I yeah. made that for me. <laughs> I didn't think a lot of people would like it. All right. Yeah, well, well, actually, it was a good video. Yeah, I, I was surprised. <laughs> you were surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, Iyad, this won't be the last time we see you here on Bahrain now, definitely. You know, after your next report, maybe on, on another wrestler or another game, pretty much we're going to bring you here and just have an open talk about it. All right? Well, Iyad, again, we're so proud to have you here. You are one of the people pretty much helped Bahrain when it comes to gaming and pop culture and retro gaming to have a transition to what it is today. And I'm sure the future is going to be even better with you. So please don't leave. <laughs> Stick around. We need you. <laughs> thank you. You humbled me again. This is very humbling. And thank you for the invite and for the interview. And I would say you are there with me as a pillar as well in that man. transition you're mentioning. Definitely, man. And we all remember how it was before gaming was kind of seen as something, you know, I would say negative. Right. And today it's like everywhere, it's, everywhere you it's look. It's a career to some people even. It is, it is. Well, thank you so much for joining us right here on Bahrain Now. It's thank been a great much. talk. Thank you very much. Much pleasure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Iyad, a person pretty much you really need to follow when it comes to retro gaming, wrestling, and a lot of fun content. All that took place right here in an interview on Bahrain Now. Mm -hmm.